HXJ, I think it is. If you pick it up, you look at read the left side plate, you can see it. Ooh. Oh, okay, good. The what? This looks like the old. Old, uh, Jake Master. Yeah, the, old antique mode. Yep. Alright, guys, so we're going to be spooling up this MXJ right here. That would be pretty cool. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Alright, guys, so on this one, we're doing the 50 pound in the cigar hollow core line. This is the first time I've actually played with their hollow core test. It's a 16 strand hollow core braid. I was trying to cut it so I can leave it all there, but it didn't. So this is their 50 pound. This is the first time I've dealt with it. And right off the bat, I can see where one of the carriers is actually tight on there. You can see it. You can see the pattern. See every every other one right there. It's about a, about a quarter inch apart right there. See that pattern, guys? It's stuff like that that I look for when I'm doing anybody's line. I don't care whose it is because I've got to let the customers know what I see. That's why they bring us their reels for us to spool up. It's not us trying to talk bad about a spooling or a braid company. It's us being responsible to our customers who bring us their gear and want us to give us their expert, give us, give them our expertise of knowledge. So that's one of the things I, I, I can tell. Now it feels pretty smooth. I can still see that, that, that deal. But when you go fast along it, you can feel it. When you go slow, you don't, well, yeah, you do still feel it. Feels like speed bumps, like this. That's telling me that one of the carriers is a lot tighter than it's supposed to be all the way through this wool. And I have not gotten a um, tester in here, but I will when I can afford it. But they're they're pretty pricey, guys. They really are. I did contact a company to see if they would be willing to sponsor us one so we could do the in-house testing. And they were un unwilling to do so, which, I mean, you know, can't. Can't fault them. They're trying to run a business and about making money, and don't know if they are hard hit like we are and stuff like that. So can't 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 shoot them down for that. And that's why I'm not saying their name. But I did con. I think I contacted like two or three, and none of them were interested in it. So okay, I'm just gonna have to do it on my own when I can. So now if the next test will be splicing. Will I be able to splice this braid? Because man, it looks real tightly woven. on my mind it's a nice day to go yeah i got a line i'm a caller the whole team let's see let's see it's opening up let's see if i can get my needle in there though see and the, the weave seems real tight because look it's not real and let me get this this is 50 pound of tight line and look at that as soon as I pick it up you know it did if I get any kind of weight on it it did real supple and that that's a that's a big thing about braids right there being supple means it's soft really soft which is good because as it tries to battle against sharp edges down there it will not try to fight it'll just slip right past them so you're less likely to get cut off. Now, don't get me wrong. You still get cut off so with any braid on the market. There ain't, I ain't been a, met a single braided line that does not get cut off. But <clears throat> I can already tell you this is going to be a pain in the butt. Just look how tight that is on on the uh, the needle right there. Now, go back to this 
tight line. It's 50 pound too. And I'm going to use the same needle. Keep it in view so you don't think I switch them out. <laughs> so I'm going to pull it out of here and I'm going to insert it over here. Look at that. I mean, it, it has stayed in form right there. That's crazy. So. Look at that. But let me squish it up. See? You can see the difference in it, how much that opens up in comparison to that one. I mean, that's crazy. Crazy, crazy tight. Let's see if I can get my laptop up and running. It does. It looks good, but that's what's keeping me it's from so being tight. able to yeah, it's so tight. The weave is so close that I can't I can't get the needle in there. And that's only you're seeing right there. And the bottom one is the tight line hollow core braid. And you can see how much, you know, threads are in each carrier. You know what I mean? This is also a 12 strand. That's a 16 strand. Crazy. Crazy. That's why we couldn't get it to, uh, to splice and stuff like that. Damn. It's super tight on there. I'm wondering if it's like this all the way through. Or is it just this one area? But I'm attempting to do my splice, so I'm going to continue on. Because it is moving, it's just really, really hard. That is super tight. Go and see if it will splice. I mean, this is really, really tight line. Well, it's splicing, but it's just being a real pain because it's super, super, super wow. tightly woven. So, fingertips are starting to hurt, put it that way. That hurts. <laughs> that really hurts. You know, the fingers are starting to cramp up over here. Mm. 
Again. Yeah, this is a real tight braid here. I mean, it. Wow. Make the loop as small as I can. Now let's see how much extra it has to cover up the tag end. Good, it covered it. Oh man, this line is hard to work with. Alright. Okay, just enough right there. You can see where it came through. Thick and thin. Got it. My anaconda not started. It's spliceable, but pain in the butt. Here we go. Let's go ahead and get this started up. I'm still trying to get my computer started, but it is being a pain in the butt. Don't know what's going on with it, but we'll see. Clear out the line counter. Get this back over. There we go. <clears throat> And this is the first time that I've dealt with the Seaguar Holocore braid, so it'll be a learning experience for me too. <laughs> That's 100 yards of the 50 pound on there. Oh, what's going on? <laughs> That's 200 yards on there. And you can see some slight color changes on it and stuff like that, but we'll see. It's 300 yards. I need to get with the customers. I gotta find out how much lining what's on here because obviously the spool holds 600 yards. I'm not gonna get 600 yards on here. So I need to know what how he plans on fishing with this reel. So I'll let you later. <laughs> later. Okay, so we're setting these up for casting. So I can go a little bit more. Huh? This Seaguar line is hard to splice. And I'm trying to get this computer to come up and running and it doesn't want to. I mean, look at it. It, it like holds its shape. Damn. Yeah. Dude, my finger's hurting from this stuff. Like, it, it doesn't want to. Fall back on just a burger. Burger King? That's what I'm doing. No, double, double meat and cheese. Me trying to splice back the way I need it or the way I like to splice back is not good. I still got six more reels to spool up and I ain't trying to fight this for an hour trying to get it on there. It's going to wear out my fingertips before I even have a chance to get to the other reels. So he's got a small tippet on there, which is still good, but definitely not where I like to be. Are you going to get this for the day? Or? 
Well, let's see if the white is anything different from the blue. Um, well, I don't see that, that, that pattern of the, that I see on the other one of it being tight. I kind of see a pattern, but I don't, it's not like that one. And what I mean by that is that when one carrier group off the braid is tight, it, cre it creates a, uh, a pattern in there. And the best way for me to, to describe it is to show it to you. Um, let me see, let me get some thick test lines just so I can pick at it. Uh, <clears throat> do this tight line right here all right so see how it's nice and smooth like that pretty pretty straightforward right now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna get one carrier group just one one of these strands see I got that one strand all right so now now that I made it shorter you can see how it's created bumps every quarter inch that's the way that other line on the um, the cigar 50 pound in blue is and you can see the color pattern in the braid itself see what I'm saying you can see it there's that line there's that line and all it is is there's one carrier group that is tighter in all of them and that's basically what's happened in a larger scale I'm trying to get this computer up and running so I can show it to y'all, but it's not doing it, so I'm doing it the best way I can. So, to take that out, we have to soak the line or that carrier back into it to make sure it stretches out so it doesn't have it anymore. So there we go. <clears throat> now we're going to go ahead and spool this one up and see if it does the same thing. The splicing is what I'm really concerned about because on the other one I could not splice it quickly. It was super, super tight. And I'm 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 thinking it's gonna be the same way with this one, because look, it's still holding its shape, which is not good. can't splice it easily guys I'm sorry but I'm gonna tie a knot man um, I said this is pretty painful when your fingertips are sore and you got to use them for everything and let's see if I can get this people in here yeah no same no I'm sorry guys, I could take a lot of pain, but when my fingertips are what I depend on to be able to feel the line and stuff like that, and they're in pain, that means I cannot properly do my job for the rest of the reels. Yeah, I can't even get the needle in there, so I'm just gonna tie a uni to it, and we're gonna have to just pull it like that, guys. This is one of the deals why I talk on these videos about braids and stuff like that, because a lot of people, don't understand the different qualities of line that there are out there. A lot of people depend on the names of the line to carry them that they think they're getting a great product. But Seaguar is a great monofilament line, but this is my first hollow core to deal with them and, and to tell you the truth, I am not impressed. This is horrible, horrible weave on there. It's super tight, it's unspliceable. I mean, it, it yeah, no, I'm sorry, um, but it's technically their hollow core braid, and we got 300 yards on there on the other MXJ, which is identical to this one. We're gonna go ahead and spool this one up with the white now. <clears throat> Thank you. 
100 yards. Two hundred yards. Three hundred yards. And still got a little bit more before we hit the bevel right there. Three hundred and fifty, and we're gonna stop right there. <sighs> got plenty of line on the. Plenty of gap, he's setting it up for casting. So 350 yards. And yeah, the microscope where we have the computer on is, I don't know, it keeps doing this, so I don't know. I'm not very computer literate to do that. I've told it to restart, to function check, to do that kind of stuff. The simple out and in things I know how to do, but once you get past that, I don't really know how to do it. Normally I do a back splice on here, but I'm going to go ahead and test it anyways. But if it's hard to splice, I'm not even going to attempt it. Um, just double checking in other areas. So basically a spot check 300 yards into the spool. And yeah, no, I can take it. Try and, there it is. Okay, I penetrated the blade. But yeah, no, it's definitely the weave is way too tight. So it's not even a hollow pore, guys. So says it is but it's not so don't fall for it um, these and these are two different spools there's a blue and a white so do a simple loop and go from there well, like i said i've used cigars um fluorocarbon lines and other monofilaments top notch but when it comes to the, <laughs> the two spools of braid that we ran into no.